ADC investment is looking at improving the efficiency of spreading clay on poor soil types in the southwest of Western Australia. Clay spreading has been done on sandy soils and has been proven to be effective for the last 10 to 15 years. And on sandy soils, they have honed their techniques and they've got the process down to a pretty fine art. Whereas this investment and this trial specifically is looking at clay spreading on gravel soils. And this project is aiming to look at improving the efficiency in which people spread clay and how they can improve their soils through spreading clay. My name's Ben Webb. We farm halfway between Cajun Nut and Boyd Brook in the high rainfall zone of WA. We run a mixed enterprise, run about 10,000 merino sheep at the moment and crop about 1,350 hectares. We've got about 2,150 arable hectares. Our farms generally are duplex loamy gravel over clay at about two or three feet. The gravel varies a fair bit. There's some good stuff and some not so good stuff. The stuff we're standing in now is not so flash, so that's why we're trying to add a bit of clay to it. We have a bit of trouble getting canola up in this sort of country. Last year we had a bit of a drier winter, which is good, good for cropping. It was a bit, we had very good yields and everything. But we're a bit short on dam water for the sheep, so we thought we could dig some holes where the dams are, maybe or soaks, and then use that clay to spread on the paddocks so we get an enlarged dam and some clay for the paddocks. So that's sort of where it started. The process of applying clay to soil is generally used to improve non-wetting. And this is because by applying enriched clay and rich soils to the sandy topsoils of uh, paddocks that are of low productivity, you can improve yields by eliminating non-wetting. Yeah, I'd say this is about three and a half percent in the topsoil. If you have a look at this, it's, it's pretty sandy in between the gravel with probably about, what do you reckon, 55, 65% gravel? Yeah, there's plenty of gravel there. Last year, there was a trial set up on this farm looking at applying clay to forest gravel. And this was a novel trial in that we were looking at applying clay and then trying to assess what the best, best method of incorporating that clay into the soil was. And that was a blanket rate of clay of 400 tonne a hectare which was probably too high for this soil type. But what we found that the clay was effective in improving yield and worked best where it was incorporated deep with a plaza, which saw a yield improvement of a tonne and a half a hectare over the untreated control area where no clay had been applied and no tillage had been applied. So after viewing that success last year, we wanted to look at whether we could refine this yeah, and that was again some pretty poor gravel, but the clay definitely helps. The soil looks better and crops germinate better. At the trial site this year, we'll be looking at three different clay rates, which will all be applied with the same tillage method. These clay rates will be 70 tonne a hectare, or a low rate, 120 tonne a hectare, or a medium rate, and 200 tonne a hectare, at the trial site last year, there was varying methods of tillage used to apply um, and to work in the clay. So the idea behind this year's trial is to remove that tillage effect and try to observe the clay as the treatment effect by itself. But all indications from last year showed that claying on forest gravels can be both economically viable and productive in terms of increasing yield. Well, I suppose when we're looking at the yield maps, if we can get the poorer areas of the paddock performing as well as the, the better areas of the paddock, and then just have the paddocks a lot more even, hopefully. The key message that's coming out of this trial is that claying could be effective on these soil types, but you need to determine what your key constraint is in your soil first. And then if you determine that claying could be effective in alleviating that constraint, then you need to A, find a good clay source, B, determine what the quality of the clay is within your clay source so you don't 
accidentally apply too much clay or inadvertently apply too little clay. And C, you need to determine how you're going to incorporate that clay and what is going to be the most efficient method and deliver you the greatest level of profitability. Mm -hmm.